Hey folks, welcome to August 10th, 2022. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. Steve and Susan are traveling, and so this week I'm going to bring to you one of our favorite, most watched videos on YouTube, and it's from the Establishing Leadership Collection. Now, on YouTube, you can go and find these, but you have to kind of pick them apart and find them and put them in different order. I've got it all in order for you here, and I hope you I hope you enjoy it. It was a lot of fun to record this with Steve. This was done several years back. A husband and a wife traveled all the way out to Queen Valley uh, to meet Steve on the ranch, and I was there video recording the entire thing. Each of them had their own mule, and they were working really, really hard to establish ground foundation training. So if you are looking to say, what are the first steps I really need to take? This is gonna be an ideal video. Now, if you feel like, oh, I've done ground foundation training, this isn't for me, eh, as Steve would say, eh, wrong answer. No, this is definitely for you. You're never gonna graduate ground foundation training. And as a matter of fact, uh, the further you get away from doing your initial ground foundation training, you might find that some of the refinement and some of the timing that you relied on early on has changed. And so this is a great opportunity for you to go back, for you to look at maybe what you could revisit and what you could work on looking at this husband and wife couple as an example. I hope you enjoy it. Y'all uh, send Steve a message, uh, 602 uh what is it? 602-999-MULE. For some reason, I'm blanking on the number, but 602-999-MULE. Uh, send Steve a message and just say uh, happy anniversary because uh, I think that would mean a lot to him. All right, y'all. Enjoy establishing leadership, and we'll talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye. Still nice and relaxed. Look at the ears. Nice and quiet. Good. Tail's a little switchy, but not a big deal. This is where you need to spend time on the right-hand side. Okay. Catching them on the right-hand side, okay? Once you catch them, it's okay to put the lead rope around them. Go ahead and put the lead rope itself around the neck now. It's just the lead rope itself. Okay, and put it on the other side and then kind of pull her towards you a little bit. You don't want to go in there and get yourself boxing and maybe get hurt. Go ahead and pull her, pull her to you just a little bit. Nice and easy. Nice. Very good. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Bring it on out. Oh, I don't want to... You bet. Okay, now come around to the other side. Now you see you're in a safe area. That was nice and quiet, just touching them nice and quiet. The animal stayed quiet the whole time. Now again, the mule is already easy to catch, and she's gentle, but we want to build her leadership that says, you move your feet when I say move them, and you keep your feet quiet when I say quiet. It's going to be a little tight, Sue. I was going to say, it's very tight. It's going to be tight. That's she's okay. She's not going to like that. No, she's not, but she'll get over it. <laughs> Always remember, they may like something, but that don't mean nothing. They may be unhappy with it, but that don't mean nothing. Two fingers above the nostril is good. They'll get over it. It's not a big problem. Now, you're, that's okay, you keep on tying it the way you're doing it. You're doing fine. I'm gonna show you a little bit, a little bit more kind of a correct way. That's very good. Okay, so what we're doing here now is we're building herd leadership. Animal is already easy to catch. But he's easy to catch on his rules, not your rules. So when we slap our leg, we make him uncomfortable. When we get quiet, we make him comfortable. They're starting to say, oh, all right, where's this going to be handy? You're going to be out in the field someplace or someplace that's kind of hard to catch. They're going to remember the lesson we just did. Now, we're going to do this today in the threes like we just did. The next time we're going to do it, those three, then we're going to do three more. We're going to do six. Next time we're going to do it, we're going to do those six. We're going to do three more, make nine, build a foundation. Pretty soon the mule just will just be just boom, boom, boom until you get to 12. Now, this is what happens. Come on over here, Sue. What we're doing is right now the mule is doing this on her terms. She's just standing there. Uh, she's a little bit swishy tailed. Uh, he needs to get this right hand side to where she responds to him. See that? How the mule just turned his head looking, respecting her. That's really respecting him. He, this mule likes him. That's really nice. The head was dropped down nice and quiet. If she likes me, why does she keep throwing me off? Because you're not communicating the reason she's throwing you off. And I can, re I can get even tougher. I could even say, I don't like your saddle, but we'll look at that as we go along. <laughs> How can you say you haven't, don't like it when you haven't seen it yet? Uh, I'm going to tell you some things are wrong with it right now. What's that? And then when I go to look at it, you're going to say, dang, Steve, you're right. Number one, you're going to find the skirting is sewed in across the back. 
It's not open. Number two, you're going to find that your D-rings for your, for your latigos on the, right and on the front and rear are in correct position. It's not just the bars. People say, well, I got mule bars. Well, they may call them mule bars, but let me look at the fit. But the other thing is, it's not just the mule bars. It's how the saddle is rigged around the tree. Okay. That's important. And the, and the majority is not. They, they all rig them the same way. Skirting's all the same way. Well, I, you may be right, because the guy who built it built poor stuff. Yeah, there you go. Hey. Would you say it's not just the mule bars? It's not just the mule bars. It's how the saddle is built around the mule tree, okay. where the D-rings are, how the skirting is built. Okay, so this right ear right now is saying, come on, come slow. And she doesn't have to turn towards you. She just does that kind of out of respect for you. And she's also trying to sniff you. And that's nice. I like to see that sniffing kind of checking you out. Yeah, oh, I like you. Okay. All right, now, right here, we completely did this on this mule's terms. All right. Yep. Now, we're going to move her off. There you go. Head's nice and relaxed. Now, step back. And the mule will turn around. Good. You know what's really nice about that? That was her right side. She does not like the right side mostly. Yes. She, she is dominant left. Remember I was well, telling you, we need to work with that. Tools. Yes. Okay. Now, again, you can approach her. Go ahead and approach her and stuff. She's doing it on her terms, you know, which is nice. Notice the difference in the attitude here. Not turning and looking at you. Just kind of head was up. What, it, that was really nice in that right-hand side because there's no garbage over there. Nothing to have to deal with. You want her to move? No. Right now we just want her just to stand still. Oh, I thought he was clicking at her. Yeah. Yeah, you really want to do no clucking, no chicken. You're exactly correct. Thank you. You really don't want to do anything to, to tell her to go other than use your body. No noises. Use your body. So if you want her to tip towards you, step to the right. So did we do this over here already? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, now we've got a different mule and a different type of attitude. Good. All right, now let's move her around to where you can, you can stop her feet when you want her to stop. Don't slap or anything, just get after her. Don't touch her. Don't get so close to her hind end. Okay, good, that was good. You could have stopped and kept her that way, but that's okay. Stop her feet when you want her feet to stop. In other words, you're gonna step toward her nose. Move her off. Okay, now step, pick a spot, step toward her nose. Okay, step towards her nose. Step toward her nose is a stop. Okay, so move her off. Don't get too close to behind her. Throw your hands up. There you go. All right, now step back. There you go. Good. Find a spot. And be careful not to get too close behind her now. Look at, look at her hind end, okay? Now stop there and back up. Okay, that tells her to stay right there in place. Now notice the tail switching. She's upset. See, as soon as you step back, that took the pressure off of her. You stopped her feet. She was getting ready to turn and go to the left. This way here, you stopped her feet on the correct side. Now just wait on her. Wait till her tail gets quiet. Again, we want to get the softness back in. So when the tail gets quiet and the head kind of drops, then kind of work your way toward her according to what her ears say. Right now, her right ear is on you, so her right brain's thinking about you. When the tail kind of gets kind of quiet, just, as soon as it gets quiet, even for a second, just make a little step. What's that tail saying? The tail is saying, I'm a little uncomfortable with you. I don't really like this, you being on my right-hand side. But the right ear is saying, what are you thinking about doing? She's kind of paying attention to you with that right brain. So when the tail gets quiet, you make a step or two. But when the tail gets moving, you get quiet. Show her that she doesn't have to have nothing to be worried about. Look at the tail. Look at the tail. Isn't that nice? The tail stayed longer that time. Tail stayed longer. Tail stayed longer. Good. Now a little sweatshirt. Don't pat. Rub. Okay. Pat.
patting kind of kind of gives them a little bit her head elevated as soon as you pat it on her and her tail is going to switching again so just kind of always rub in the very beginning patting later <clears throat> okay when the tail gets quiet move away go ahead and step way back and just kind of relax let her head drop a little bit watch her head her head's elevated she's a little concerned her tail switching she's a little concerned so kind of watch your head drop a little bit and it's going to be ever so slight there's some look at the top of the rail that'll kind of give you an idea there's some yes the tails quiet nice and quiet walk on over watch the tail again we're trying to build softness it's not important to put the halter on it's more important to keep the mule soft look how much more softer the animal's staying now Staying softer, softer, staying softer. Nice and quiet. There you go. Now he's concerned, so let's go ahead and pay him. Give him a little quietness. There you go. Softer, softer. So far better this time. Now some good rub. Just rub. No petting. I understand. It's hard. It's easy to do. Just give him a little rub. Scratch him. Again, you're building softness. You're showing this mule there's nothing to be worried about. This right-hand side needs to be worked with. I would saddle from the right hand side, I would brush from the right hand side. What should your disposition be as you're approaching? Your disposition as you're walking up should be squared shouldered looking straight ahead. Oh. If, if, yeah, and nice and quiet. Step only according to the head. The head right now, it's got the right ear on you, so the head is saying, come on, but come slow. But the tail is saying, I'm still kind of worried. So you don't have the whole meal thinking about you. You only got the part of the meal. So as soon as the meal, the meal's tail gets quiet, there, yeah, that head's dropping nice, very nice. But we want the whole meal, not half of the meal. So when that, when that tail's hanging quiet, we're doing good. We want the whole meal, beautiful. Awesome, awesome. See, the neat thing about this is you're watching the whole animal now. You're not just watching the head. You're getting a feel for the whole animal, you know. Beautiful. And to me, this is more important than riding. You know, this is building a relationship, you know. We'll, we'll get to the riding. There's a whole different relationship on there. There you go. Okay, now stop her feet when you want. Step back. There you go. Now step a little bit to your right. A little bit more. The hip should move around. Slap your leg. Slap your leg. There you go. Now stop. There you go. Now nice and quiet. Let's watch the tail. Left ear is not really concerned about you at all, but it's still watching you. Watching, we're watching the tail. Want that tail to hang quiet. So now we want the whole animal, you see. If the tail's switching, we only got the front part of the animal thinking it's okay. They're getting some relaxation in the eye now. That's nice. See that eye getting kind of fluffy? Mm -hmm. Quiet. That's nice. Tail's still switching. It's kind of hang loose right there a little minute. Left ear, left eye's really paying attention to you with that left ear. I see the head elevated when you kind of step forward a little bit, but we're working on it. We'll get that better. Petting and scratching. There you are. Nice. This is really nice because you're learning to communicate the mule. The mule's liking it. Oh, boy, just dropped his head a bunch more right there. Got nice and quiet. About got the whole animal thinking it's okay.
Oh, nice. You know, it could be because she's a paint and that's the way it came about. That's the only thing I can think about because a lot of people would look at that and think it's a saddle mark, but it's not. Yeah, how would you do that, you know? So unless it was a, a damage some way or another, but it's not really showing that. I think it's just her from being a paint, just kind of those unique markings. So you've done it three times now. And the mule is nice and quiet. You understand you want the whole body. Okay, and that's going to take time. By the time you get to your three, six, nine, twelve, it'll be nice and quiet and going. But the idea is you're moving the feet, you know, and you're asking the feet to stop. It's not on its terms; it's on your terms. I think one thing I need to work on is that getting her to move and then stop when I want her to stop. When we go over to the round pin, we're going to change that whole the whole thinking part of this. Okay. And the round pin will change, you know. And also when I start showing you how to use the come along hitch, you know. But now would probably be a good time to break for lunch. It's 11.30. If we break for lunch now, then we can come back again at, uh, at uh, 1.30 or, or 2 o'clock, and we can start over again. Okay? This time, since it's going to be a little bit warm, we're going to do what's called a come-along hitch, and I'm going to show you how to use it, and we'll go down here in the shade, and uh, we'll, we'll work on it down there. I want to work on the come-along hitch, and, and uh, maybe how you doing on your halter, little girl. Okay, now, one of the first things I do when I usually come in is uh, I, I make friends, you know, but I also show them that I'm going to be, uh, I, I don't want them in my space. So, see, with this one here, knowing he's not as dull as this one is, when I say dull, it takes quite a bit to make him move, you know. That's why I had to do the slapping. This one here, all I had to do is move my foot a little bit, and it got out of my space. So you see, there's a variety of ways of saying, get out of my space, but it's extremely important that this happens. So I'm going to come up, boy, I don't like your eye, baby. Do we have a fly mask at all? Have a fly mask we don't need it right now, but we're, but we're going to need it. Okay. Uh, but I, I've got one otherwise. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to kind of pet on him. Now, this rope that I have, is, uh, it's got a smell to it. It's got wax, it's a wax coated. So... I'm going to uh, I'm going to put it over his head, but I'm going to come up here like this and kind of pet on him, scratch on him a little bit, and kind of let him see he's kind of bracy a little bit. He's worried about it, so I'm going to come on up and pet on him, kind of go nice and slow there like that, and pet on him as I'm going at it, so he doesn't get worried about it. But I can feel it in my hands he's bracing me, kind of pushing at me a little bit. So I'll go ahead and pull that on up. Now this is a wax coated rope. It's two strand. So it's fairly soft, but yet uh, I, I can still, the idea of the wax is so that when I put this on him, it doesn't move up and down the face a lot. It used to be I told everybody, uh, take you an old lariat rope, take one strand out of it, and you got yourself a rope. But the waxing was what's important. So we're going to go right to left. You see he's a little worried about his nose, not too bad. We'll come around again, right to left. Notice I put the coils down on the ground here because you can get yourself hung up with those coils. And then I pull up on the first one, and I push on the second one. And see, he's a little worried about that. So I'll come back, I'll put my left hand on his nose, and I'll rub on him a little bit. And if he goes and pulls his head up, I'm going to squeeze his nose. So I'm going to get his head to come down, come around the right ear first, left ear second. Why do I do the right ear first? If I do the right ear first, I tend to bring him to me. If I do the left ear first, I tend to push him away from me. Okay. Now I can feel this mule's got a lot of stiffness, like right here, a lot of stiffness. So I'm going to work on this mule a little bit. Uh, come here, mule. So that I'm going I'm to work on softness. I'm going to put my right hand up on the pole, my left hand here. I'm taking my middle finger, and when he pushes against me, I'm going to push right in here. So I'm using this finger, pushing right in here, making it uncomfortable for him.
You're going to spend most of your time in that stall? I'm going to be moving here in just okay. a second. Okay. There, so I want the softness. So now I pick up on the lead rope. Myself, I like to see my clients just use loops because they're not used to using coils and getting themselves hung up. So I'm gonna pick the mule up and come over here in the shade a little bit. That's the only gate I could get through right there. Okay, we still got the hay problems with the poop. How uh, it's not really working with his digestive system. So uh, the ones this morning were nice and round and looking good. They were from a day or so back, you know. So kind of go through your hay and be a, be a little bit picky as to what you give this one here. Smell it, get, uh, get a, a, a smell for it. Because we want to be thinking when we're looking at our mules and as we're working with them and stuff, they're, they're getting their diet correct. And this is, you know, some of it has to, that's better. A little bit of it, because you got to remember the, the, the apples that I saw this morning were nice and round and looked good. So that would have told me, if I would have seen a lot of this, I would have said nervousness from the trailer, okay? But we still had those from actually the day before. Now, this is just recent. So this right here would be from the feeding from yesterday and today. So I like to see them shiny like that, wet, a lot of good moisture into it. That's really nice, you know? One of the things you can do to see how about your hydration on your mule, besides touching the gums, is to take a nap of hair and kind of roll it up. See how quick it'll go back. Goes back really quick. You probably know that one, but that's a good thing to do. Now, the come along hitch comes over the pole, and there's a notch right here you can kind of feel. There's a natural notch right in this area. You can feel the, the back of the skull coming up right here. And... Uh, so this rope, you want to always keep it right in this area. And then you want it two fingers above the nostril. Now, this is going to communicate to the nose, underneath the chin, and on the pole. So I communicate to all three places that need to be communicated with. Not like a chain where it's only at the nose, top, or bottom. Okay. So one of the things I'm going to do is kind of pick up on it and kind of pick and just kind of touch the mule a little bit like this. Good, get a foot movement, and then come over here, pick it up, get a foot movement, front foot, there, good. Now I'm going to kind of back up a little bit, bracing me right there. Watch my hand, see how it rolls? Asking, telling, demanding. All right, now let's go back to the ask. See embrace, see embrace. Ask, tell. Oh, I didn't have to go to a demand. So I'll come back forward. See embracing me right there. Ask, tell, demand, demand. Okay. Yeah, you betcha. Now, will they lose hair on their nose? Oh, yeah. Will you be able to see where the rope was? Oh, yeah. But see, right now, she's using all five major neck muscles, the one along the crest, the one down through the center, one along the esophagus, and these two here, plus the throat latch against us. See that muscle right there? That's a pretty tight throat latch for being able to be pulled on, okay? So I'm going to ask her to back up again. Ask, tell, good. Ask, oh, better. Ask, oh, yes. Man, I don't like that tell and demand stuff. So ask her to come forward. Asking here. Telling here. Demanding. See your brace against me? Now. Only because I'm building a foundation with her head first. Later on, I'll change that. Right now, she needs to understand to respect the halter. Don't pay attention to me. Listen to the halter. I'm halter training, okay? So now I'm going to ask. Good for you. Now I'm going to ask. Good for you. So I'm halter training. I'm not, I'm not the monster yet, but I'm getting ready to be. 
Okay, so now pick it up again, asking. Good, asking, good. Now backing up, good, good, good for you. See the difference, okay? Asking, telling, demanding makes sense to them because it is the way they talk, the way they understand, okay? So now, I'll go back and I'll ask. So I, what I'm doing is I'm halter training, all right? This is all halter training. And I'm just kind of bumping. It's a little too low now, so I'll raise it up. So I'm just kind of bumping. Now I'll come up and I'll just kind of ask like this. Good. 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 Now let's back that foot up. Now the right rear foot. Now the right rear foot, nope. Now the right rear foot. Nope. What I'm doing, good, good question. What I'm doing is I'm rolling my wrist and I'm pointing down toward that foot. If I wanted this foot up, I would raise up my hand and move that foot, okay? So now I'm pointing toward the back foot, and what I'm doing here, is I'm pointing toward, let me get her balanced here. There, I'm pointing toward the foot. Okay, let's move that foot, good. Now let's right rear foot. Left one went pretty easy. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, put it back. Don't lean against me. Nope, put it back. Okay, I'll move it back. There, the girl. There. Boom. She just kept thinking, wait a minute, what foot am I supposed to move? And she started figuring out it was the foot. Then finally, I was able to get her to keep this one in place while I was doing the other one. Now, I want to move the left front foot. So I'm going to do this. This is all part of halter training. You'd see this as halter classes. And she wasn't bracing so much, it'd be a lot easier. But what this is going, what this is actually doing is getting her to back off with the bracing and listen to moving the feet. So it's taken quite a bit of work on my half to get her to loosen up this neck muscles. Okay. Now let's go back. There we go. Good for you. Now bring it back. Bring it back again. Nope, nope, nope. Come on. Nope. You had it. Let's put that one down. Okay, good. Okay, now. Nope. Nope. Boy, she's just really bracing against me. There. Okay, now. Okay, now I'll leave her alone for a little bit. And then we'll come around and we'll put the rope underneath her neck. 
halter classes are really boring. You'll see a, a mule and a person out there and they're trying to make him stand and look really good in this stuff. And it is one of the toughest things to do to learn how to get feet right, move your hands just right, especially when one is wanting to brace. And this mule is really bracing. So what I'm doing right now is I'm teaching the mule to follow the lead of the rope. And if this was a young mule, it would also be teaching him how to use a breaching or a mule that hasn't had a breaching before. Now watch my hand as I'm doing this. I'm just going to bump. I'm going to take up the slack as I go. So you see, I'm not using any pressure. So it's following from what we did this morning, okay? She's following just the weight of the rope only. So the halter, i.e. the come along rope, is do, she's listening to it rather than me pulling out. Do you all see the difference, how well that works? So everything's going to be in threes. It'll be the same stuff that you guys are going to do out here. So <coughs> we'll go around right and left, all right? So now it's very important that the animal's feet be quiet and still. So we're going to... Now, your feet moved a lot. Feet don't move. Feet don't move. Feet don't move. Feet don't move. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when we did that this morning, we wanted them to move. That's right, we wanted him to move. Okay, now, we're going to come to a point to where he's going to learn when to stand still, i.e. with a lead rope, and when to stand still with no lead rope. You see, I know it gets mind-boggling to you. We didn't have a lead rope on when we were doing Exactly, you know, and there's different ways of moving them around. I let you all do that because these guys are pretty gentle. You did good, okay? But here's the thing. Anybody can make their feet move because it's natural for them to do it. But to get them to make their feet stand still, that's, that's hard to do. So if you notice, I tried to do it with just a bump and let go and be loose. <laughs> Don't move that foot. on a loose lead rope, okay? Now when I pick it up, I want to go somewhere, now I pick it up and I bump them. Now I can, now they can move their feet. Starts to go away, sharp bump. No, you follow me. So what I'm asking is, will you follow me around on a loose, loose lead or will you go try to do your own thing? And if you do, that's the wrong answer to my question, I'm gonna bump you, okay? So if you follow me around, I'm going to loose. That's right. That's right. Good. Can I come over here? Come over here. This is all halter work. Slight bump. Keep following. That rope. And if you pull it tight, it's going to make you uncomfortable. Why are you using the come along rope instead of a rope halter? Okay, one of the reasons I'm using the come along rope rather than a rope halter is the come along rope communicates to the pole, top of the nose, bottom of the nose with more nerve pressure. I can get more done because what happens is this whole thing between the pole, top and bottom all creates kind of a kind of a vice situation and it hits all the natural points that says go right go left go straight pull back where the halter only does just key points up on the nose key points on the chin where this has everything at one time and it tells them right now there's not going to be no other decisions you better respond okay so it's it's more of a it's more of a full communication to everything but the neat thing about it when i do pull and I let go, it becomes loose right off the bat. Loose right off the bat. So if I pull, let go, it becomes loose. This, this really, you got far more control. You got far more control with this than you've got with a, with a rope halter or with a chain at all. Good. Uh, 
when I have, like when I was at Yosemite, we had a lot of mules with dead underneath the nerves here from, from the chains so much. And so first thing I did was I put the come along hitch on all of them so that I could get them to follow through because it communicates to the pole, top of the nose, bottom of the nose, full communication. And they have a choice. Look, when I first pick up on this, you see how it does the nose first? Then underneath the chin and then the pole. So it kind of works in three stages, ask, tell, demand. But if they really pull back, everything gets them at one time. So they can't, they can't make a decision to go right, left, or back. If they do, everything's in trouble because it gets to, be, gets to be more pressure. Okay, does that make sense to you? And the rope being so far down her neck, you don't want it up closer. The, the, no, the, the rope around the neck, around here, absolutely does nothing. It's never going to get tight. It's just there. It's just there to kind of hold the, everything into place. But this never will choke them, never gets tight, you know. I seen in a, uh, uh, I seen a, a, a thing I went to here about a couple of weeks ago, and it was horrible. These guys were all supposed to be trainers, and they only had so much time to train. This one guy choked this mule down. He literally hit the ground, was unconscious. I hollered out, that's enough. You know, nobody knew I was there. I was going incognito to this thing. And uh, there was two veterinarians with me. They were, they were ripping. They were mad, you know. It was ridiculous. But no, there's no reason. You had to put that on again because you did that one. Then you did another one around her nose. You bet. And then you twisted it somehow. I don't, I don't recall. You are going to get a chance. Good, good question. You are going to get a chance to do this a lot. Okay. Because you're going to be using this every day. Okay. okay. So. Um, Why don't you bring it over here and I'll record it. That way you guys have the recording and then you good. can walk over here and check it out too. Okay, so that changed your whole attitude, didn't it, buddy? <laughs> what an attitude adjustment that was. Okay, the first thing we want to do is, is my ropes are wax coated, okay? And uh, they're two strand. So we're going to go, and they're 24 feet. We're going to go right to left. Notice how I'm standing. I'm going to go right to left. I'm going to bring his nose over here a little bit. Then I'm going to come around again, right to left. The second one is going to go above the first one. Okay, now I'm going to pull on the first one, feed with the second one. And let me get this on camera where you can kind of see this a little bit. Okay, I'll, I, this is not quite how I want him to stand. There we go. All right, now we go right to left. And we come around again, right to left. Second one goes above the first one. I pull up on the first one. I feed with the second one. Remember, what we're doing here is halter training. Remember how last time I put his head in his air and he was all worried? He got a different little attitude now. So I pull over the right ear first, left ear second. The reason I pull over the right ear first, it keeps her head over this way. And then I take and I pull it down and I pull up on the slack here. And then I pull down on the slack here. So you always can raise and lower it here. We start out two fingers above the nostril. Will, will you miss some hair on him? Yes. Will sometimes, will it swell up? Oh, yes. Okay, but that's all part of it. If, once he gets a sore nose, we're going to have respect. This one won't be so bad because he was no problem at all. He was a piece of cake. So okay. is the next one tighter now? It no, tight. it's loose. Oh, okay. It's always going to be loose. This neck rope is always going to be loose. Okay. okay. Even, though, even if this gets tight, this is going to still stay loose. Okay. okay so it's, you're never going to worry about choking them down. Like I said, I, it used to be one of our favorite things was to choke them down because we were catching wild horses out. So when we roped them, we choked them down and pulled a foot up. That was part of it. You know, but we was in the middle of nowhere. We didn't have a round pin. And they were seven, eight, nine, ten years old, big stout horses. You know? so, but once we put this come along hitch on them, you know, they, they got to learn things. Can you just really quickly, I'm sure when you're touching it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But you were talking about how they were, like you could feel all the tension. Can you just let me know what that's supposed sure. to feel like? It's one of the great bit. things about Dave. He doesn't understand the equine world. And most people have a little problem with this too. But still, he asked some awesome questions. So it's helped my videos out a lot. Okay. When I take and I put my hand here, this mule's head should automatically start going down. But he's bracing up against it. 
So if I move it here and put pressure here, oh yeah, because I'm right there in the pole and I'm, I'm gonna make him do it, okay? But I'll go over here and slide my hand here and I feel him pushing against my hand. When I put my hand here, it's only just touching. I'm not pushing. So just my hand here should say to him, drop your head. But instead, he's putting pressure against me, okay? So now I'm gonna put my left hand up on the nose and as I do that, I'm gonna take this finger and I'm gonna push right in this area here. There's some, there's some nerves and, and blood vessels and this sort of thing. So as I do that, I'm just gonna to touch here. But if he pushes against me like there, I'm gonna shove my finger in. See him pulling, put him, pulling backwards, trying to find another way. Good, good. Now see him bring his head back up. That's bracing, that's taking all five major neck muscles and pulling. Any time they push against your hand, you feel any pressure at all, that's bracing. As soon as I put my hand here, he should be thinking about coming down. As soon as I put my hand here, it should be coming. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn it, put a little pressure there. Every time he drops his head, I take my hand off. So every time I feel him relax, I take my hand off, put my hand back on. Now he's gonna brace against me, so I'm gonna keep my hand here. He's trying to find another way to answer my question. Okay, there he dropped his head. I took my hand off. Take my hand off. So he says, oh, okay. Should be. That's exactly right. But see, he's bracing me. He's finding another way rather than dropping my head. Yes. Too much pressure up on the pole if I come up here. Okay. So to answer your question, the question, <coughs> why do I have my hand here? Because... Up here, it's going to put a lot of pressure on him. You tend to brace and get back away from me. And, and he'll tighten the neck muscles. So I put my hand here for now. If I have to, if I have to, I will uh, go up there. But I don't want to have to on him. He's already bracy enough as it is. Good, 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 good. Again, all I'm doing is put my hand here. And he's learning there. There. But see, when he goes the opposite way, what he does is he stiffens all five neck muscles. This one across the top, the, on, the, on the crest, down through the middle, along the esophagus, and the two along the shoulder, and then, of course, the throat latch. So as soon as he pulls away, he tightens up everything. But my hand is here, and if he'll just relax, which is, that's relaxation there, that's loosening those neck muscles. Now I'll ask him for some more. So he's pushing against me, pushing there. So he's the one applying the pressure. He's the one applying the pressure. He's the one pushing against me. So right there, that's softness. Right there, all the neck muscles are loose. This is something we should all practice right there, right there. So I'm gonna ask for just a little bit more. It's number two. He heard something there. So he tightened up everything. Right now he's tight. Right now he's putting pressure against my, my, my upper hand, but no pressure on the nose. He's saying, okay, if I move back away, will you take your hand away? No, I increase the intensity. There. There. As soon as he relaxes, I take my hand off. Right there, he relaxed a little bit. I take my hand, put it back on. So every time you see me take my hand off, he's relaxing, he's not pushing against me. Like that, okay? But how do they get tight like that? Us pulling on them. How do they get tight like that? Them sorry nylon halters, you know? People think, oh, they're pretty, they look nice. No, let me show you more about that nylon halter. Show me, give me that halter right there. Let me show you some of the problems that you're creating. Besides the stiffness and the pulling against you, you're creating some other problems. I really thought this was something. When I first brought my first nylon halter to the ranch, old, old uh, Bill Doherty looked at me and said, what the heck are you doing with that thing? I said, man, I don't have to tie no more halters. He says, I got it. This is the new thing. This is the new thing. He says, nope, all it's going to do is create problems. Boy, was he right. We started having halter pullers being brought to us, you know, people with fingers missing. See him, see him refusing. That's bracing. 
That's bracing. So I've got my hand here, and I'm reminding him. He goes, oh, okay. I wouldn't want it on my nose either. It's horrible. Okay, he's bracing me right there. So I'm going I'm to wait right here. I have to give a little bit with the feet to be able to give to, to get what I want with the head. There. All right, nylon halters. What about this going up into here? You think that would feel good? You know, they, everybody says, oh, look, it's got a little notch on it. No, that notch goes right around there and hits that bone just right. So as this mule is bouncing around in the trailer, do you don't think he ain't getting his head beat to death? I've seen some of these just bleeding from these sorry halters, you know. And sure, I can lower it down to the last notch there, okay. But if he pulls back on it, what do you think? Oh, I just love these halters. It makes me all kinds of money training mules that are head shy, you know. Brace, brace, brace. There's nothing here. This big webbing here, shoot. You want to know why he's tight? You give me one step. I can't get him to go forward right now. Ah. I finally had to bump up, bump a little bit to get it to go. Tightening them neck muscles. He says, shoot, that, don't, that halter don't mean diddly to me. So I tell folks, you know, these are pretty and everything. They'll be prettier on eBay or prettier hanging on your wall. <laughs> so we go back with the come along hitch. I'm going to ask you, that a boy, look at you. You're so awesome. Uh, how about this? They don't want you messing with their nose, you know. So right to left. Second one goes above the first one. Pull up on the first one. Feed with the second one. Right, le right ear first, left ear second. Yes, sir. Do you want a fly mask on her? Yep, we want a fly mask on her. Oh, you didn't say on her face. You, oh, you want it on her? <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. I want them to stand still, no matter what kind of monster jumps at them, however, okay? And don't notice all I had to do was kind of bump them a little bit. Bump them. It's not the sacking out. It's not the desensitizing. It is the halter training, period. Anybody, okay? can get their feet to move, and everybody can sit there and shake that thing until they finally quit, okay? But as you can see how fast it was, even as quick as I went at him, the mule didn't want to move his feet. I just barely bumped it and said, do you want to make that decision? Uh, no, bad decision. Feet stand still, okay? And eventually you get to where, I mean, you jump them in a trailer, piece of cake. <whistles> yeah, yeah, get out of here! Oh, dang, I forgot to hold on to the lead rope. Might have run off. Get out of here! Oh, I forgot to hold on the lead rope. Yeah! See, it's got to be, you got to have the respect for the halter. You know? And you don't get this bracing and stuff with this. Ain't going to happen. When I was in Brazil, the guy had two things. Couldn't bridle the mule and couldn't saddle the mule. A couple pretty important things. This mule belonged to this guy's dad. He said it took three guys to bridle him. One earring him down, one with a twitch on him, the other guy to put the bridle on. Fifteen minutes later, I'm putting this bridle on. He said he was ear shy. And I said, this mule ain't ear shy. Pretty soon I had the ears moving all around. I did groundwork, you know, and this sort of thing. I was able to get the come along hitch on. Got the mule to do this. So then I took the bridle, slid it right on with ease. This, this young Brazilian, he was over there going, like this, you know, and all the Brazilians up in the up in the bleachers were hollering, "Boon is Devin, Boon is Devin, good Steve, you know, Boon, good." And uh, he was just blew away, you know. That was fun, but this come along hitch does it, you know. So we got the idea what it looks like there, okay? All right, 
I'll let you come in and put them on. She's got kind of a runny eye right now from the flies. Um, so, but we'll take this thing Did on and off. Did you say you don't like fly spray? Uh, I use WD-40, okay? WD-40, of course, is a petroleum base, okay? But I use WD-40 on the tail, so it splashes around, and then on the chest, then down around the legs. But as far as on the face, I just use this. If you've ever seen a hide that I, I do a lot of raw hide and stuff. If you ever see a hide that has had uh, uh, that sprays on them, all those insecticides and stuff, that hide is junk. It's got, it's, you can almost see through it, you know. So I'm not one for sprays. I spray WD-40, especially down around their legs. You know how a lot of times, you ever had a, a mule yet that, that uh, flies really bite on them and, 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 and uh, give them a rash and stuff? Well, the WD-40, if you do it just before the springtime, kind of give them a spray here and there, rub it on with your, with a, with your gloves or a rag, and uh, do it every other day. I used to do it once a week. Spray it on the tail and away you go. You know? Okay, come in and put the cumulon hitch on. I got another rope over there. I guess you're going to work with this one, huh? 